Up to this point, we've seen a number of different ways of integrating things over curves and surfaces, and I'd now like to summarize and compare these different kinds of integrals. So first we saw the integration of a function over a curve with respect to arc length. So this is integration with respect to arc length. In particular, if you integrate f equals 1, you just get the length of the curve. And similarly, we have the integration with respect to surface area of a function over a surface. And if you integrate the function f equals 1, you just get the area of the surface. And these integrals do not depend on the parameterization as long as you don't go over the same part of the curve or the surface more than once. In particular, if your parameterization is a bijection from the domain to the curve or surface, then you'll always get the same answer for these integrals. Next, we looked at integrals over a curve of um, f dx or f dy. And this doesn't have such a nice intuitive description, but it does have the important property that it depends on an orientation of the curve. Um, so if you switch the orientation, then you multiply the integral by minus 1. Aside from that, these integrals do not depend on the parameterization, if it's a bijection anyway. Okay. And you can put these together to get the integral of a vector field along a curve. And what is the meaning of this? So, so this measures the circulation of f along c. So if your curve is over here, at each point you're taking a tangent vector to the curve so this is r prime of t, and you're taking the dot product of that with f. So you're measuring the extent to which f is pointing in the same direction as the tangent vector to the curve. Um, now, the integral of a vector field over a surface is different. It's actually sort of the opposite thing, because here we're measuring the flux across the surface. So if the surface is over here, what we do is at a point on the surface, we take the unit normal vector to the surface, and we take the dot product of f with that. So this is measuring the extent to which f is pointing in the normal direction of the surface. So for the curve, here we use a tangent vector to the curve. while for the surface integral, we use a normal vector to the surface. For example, if um, the vector field for the surface is everywhere tangent to the surface, then the flux will be zero. While for the curve, if the vector field is everywhere perpendicular to the curve, then this circulation will be zero. So there, there's kind of the opposite thing. Uh, in any case, they also depend on orientation in the same way. So if you switch the orientation, you multiply by minus 1. Otherwise, this doesn't depend on the parameterization. You can pr prove that these surface integrals are independent of the parameterization in that way using the change of variables formula for double integrals. Um, I will omit the details of that. Okay, now there's one missing box here, and this actually can be filled in. So there are integrals over a surface of f dx dy, an oriented surface, um, f dx dz, and this an s, f dy dz. So the definition of these is beyond the scope of this course, but you should be aware that these exist. Okay, so those are the different kinds of integrals over curves and surfaces. And in the next section of the course, we're going to see some new relations between some of these different integrals.